everyone, it's Sandra from the Funky Pickle Thrifter. Welcome to my jewelry haul video. I've been really getting some great stuff that I really couldn't wait to do a video on, and I am finally just getting around to it. So I have a friend who works in an antique store. I mean, he's not really a friend, but I've done business there before, I should say. And I went there um, maybe about two weeks ago or so, and I got these awesome guilloche enamel earrings. These are costume but they're really cool. They kind of have a 1960s look to me. They might be newer than that, but I love these. These are nice and heavy, and I think they're very special. I also got these earrings. Now, I think these are just stunning. You can see there's a left and a right. These are very different, I think. I just love this sort of geometric thing. I don't know if it's like a modernist take on leaves and, and berries, but they are signed 925 Mexico DDD. So DD is for DDD rather is for a designer, Dominique Dinuart Designs. I'm sure I'm not saying that name right. But these looked really special to me. You know, I like to really try to buy jewelry you just don't see all the time. And I think these are quite special. And I also love that they're artist signed. So I got these. Here's a bracelet that is sort of to die for. I love this bracelet. I really do. It's very big, as you can see. It is marked 925. So this one probably doesn't have a lot of age to it. I don't think this is that easy to kind of solder these all together like this. This is some handmade work here in parts. But I love all these stones together. Really beautiful, right? So we have our coral, onyx, lapis, rose quartz, gold stone, and carnelian. I think that's correct. Well, I love this. Very heavy, very substantial. I got this one just because I want to keep it. I want to wear it. This is a great summer bracelet. It's chunky. I think it's really unusual, and I haven't worn it yet, but I think I'm going to wear it this weekend. I love it. And then this happened. So he had these in his store. Now, this is a very specific thing. A lot of people don't like this type of jewelry. I do, you see. I'm a big collector of Victorian jewelry, and I do really enjoy hair jewelry. Now, we certainly would never be able to say if this is morning jewelry or not morning jewelry. That's something I think we will likely never know. I believe this is only gold plated. I don't think that's real gold. This one has a little bit of a problem with the hair, which is common. And then, unfortunately, this part over here has some problems, too. But I got these for a really, really good price. So I love the stone in here. Now, this one could date to as early as the 1830s. But there's a whole story here. So uh, let me, I have to be really careful, especially when I lift this one. So this is a beautiful pin. And uh, I believe, by the way, these pieces came from the same woman. I believe that for a couple of reasons, but I did examine really, really carefully this hair with my loop under a bright light. I mean, with a 20 times loop, really carefully. So yes, the hair is brown, but there are some sort of characteristic red flecks in the hair and kind of golden flecks. That's very uniform between all of these pieces of jewelry. I really can't understand how people get so grossed out over hair jewelry Hair is beautiful. Hair, we spend a lot of money on it. We comb it. We brush it. It's lustrous. It's beautiful. We take pride in it. And in the 1800s, you, they were just a keepsake. And people, it's hard, I guess, for people to kind of relate to it these days. Although I know a lot of people, like, they had their kid have their first haircut and they saved a little lock of hair. So hair is really a wonderful thing as a keepsake because it doesn't degrade very easily and it can keep for a long, long time, you know, if it's stored under the right conditions. So now let's talk about these earrings. So I love these earrings and I don't have any quite like it, although this is very common, this sort of look to them. But here's what is weird. So this, the hair belongs to the same person. Now, these backs are called kidney wires. I believe that kidney wires started being used in about the 1870s. And you're probably saying, what, does any of this matter? But it does, and I'm going to show you in a second. Now, it's possible these things got replaced a lot. So it's possible this is a replacement, and it had an older 
uh, finding on it in its day. But maybe this stuff is from the 1870s. I don't know. Only here's the thing. It came with paperwork. So it says here, date, 1839. As you can see, somebody erased it. I believe it originally said uh, 1633. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So, okay, Susan Johnson Wheeler. Now, when I do some research on Susan Johnson Wheeler, Susan Johnson Wheeler was... Uh, was born in 1807. She died in 1850. I do believe this is her hair. I don't know. This is the weird part. Why would the date say 1839? It's such a specific date. It's sort of weird. So right here, it says A.J. Wheeler's mother's hair. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Only here's what's weird. She died in 1850, and he would know that because he was born in 1850, and she died of something called childbed fever in 1850. So after she gave birth to him, apparently this was a common thing. You'd give birth, and then you'd get an infection from the childbirth. He kind of wouldn't die during childbirth. So I feel like it's just sort of a weird date. I don't understand. It's just a very specific date. If it said... 1830s or 1840s, it would make more sense. But because it's very, very specific, that's what's sort of weird about it. But let's open this up because there is more. Now, the guy in the antique store told me that he bought this from somebody in this guy's family, and it had been saved all these years. This all goes together with this letter, which is just fabulous. So Andrew J. Wheeler, Sharon, Connecticut. Now, I did look up Andrew J. Wheeler, I'm able to find his will online, or maybe I found the mother's will online. It didn't seem like they had a lot of money. Their house was worth $2,000, which in the 1830s or 1850, or whenever the will was from, their house was worth about $150,000, like in today's money. So that's not really like a rich people or whatever, but let's take a look at this. This set of jewelry was made of hair of Janet Louise Clothier's great-grandmother Wheeler and presented to Janet Louise Clothier on her 21st birthday, March 24th, 1936, by her grandfather, A.J. Wheeler. So if he was born in 1850, 1936, he was, what, 86? Yeah, he was 86, A.J. Wheeler, when he gave this to his granddaughter, my dear Janet, I hope you will enjoy having this little gift as long as you live. And when you will have no more use for it, it'll be handed down. Who is enjoying the way he spelled handed? Handed down in your family through all future generations. Grandpa Wheeler. So this is just a lovely set. It is a little bit puzzling with this date and the fact that these earring backs, I don't think those were around in 1839. Now it's possible too. It's possible this letter didn't go, doesn't go with these. I think that's pretty unlikely, but it certainly is possible. I don't think it's possible that these belong to different people because that hair looks the same to me. Not that I'm an expert, but it seems to have weird colored flecks that are really very uniform throughout all of these pieces. And the other thing to think about is it certainly is possible that this date is just wrong. That's also completely possible. It's also possible that this is the right date and it was just her hair and it hadn't been made into jewelry until a later time. So, yeah, I, I'm just sort of puzzled by it, really. I'm just not sure. And maybe it's something we will never know. But I just love this set. I love Victorian jewelry. I do love hair jewelry. So I got that very, very exciting. And if anybody wants to try to help me solve the mystery and figure out how and why that date would be that specific, I would just love to know that. Anyhow, it's just this sort of um, wonderful mystery kind of in a way, you know? Yeah, I got some great stuff from him. Very, very excited about that. So I found this necklace at a yard sale, and the first thing I thought, well, I love these pearls. These are called coin pearls. So there is like this sort of a shape irritant that's put in the mollusk, and it does its thing, you know, and it forms the knacker around this. So it seems like this was left in for a really long time because this seems quite thick, and I just love the way it's very uneven. But it was at a yard sale. I said, how much are the necklaces? So she said, they're a dollar each. And I grabbed this. It does say 14 karat gold on the finding. Now, when I see 
Let's see if we can get it. Yeah, hopefully you can see that 14 karat. So when I see uh, 14 karat gold findings like this, it's usually a clue that it might be something worth picking up for a dollar, you know. And I also assume that these little spacer beads are also 14 karat gold. Of course, I can't know that, but I know how to verify it, as you do too. So anyhow, I thought this was well worth a dollar. And I think this is very interesting and very, very pretty too. So I love that. Maybe we'll test these and see what these beads are. They could be glass. They could be garnet. Let's check them. I do have my tester here. So let's do that at the end. You know, we'll see what we see. I got these somewhere too. So I believe this is angel skin coral. It's another one that skews really white. And I really love this finding. Look at this thing. Isn't that pretty? Is it original to it? Uh, I don't know. It might be. It might not be. I think it is. It's hard to tell, right? Let me see if I can open it. Let's see what it says inside, if anything. Hmm. I don't see anything. But I thought this was a pretty necklace, too, for a dollar. This wasn't at the same yard sale, but I thought that was very, very beautiful. My apologies if, if I showed you this before. Actually, this was just sort of sitting here today. Um, this is pretty awesome. I have no idea what this is. Is that supposed to be like a, a man right there or something? Uh, I'm not sure. Doesn't that look like a face and hair and a mustache and a beard? I don't know. And then these are plants. I guess that represents the sun. Boy, I'm really guessing here. I don't know what this is. It kind of has this very cool brutalist look now it is marked well it says 925 it's marked riccio right there or riccio i don't know how to say that and um that is a designer that i don't know uh, i don't have any information on but i think this is a very unusual ring so if anybody knows anything about it let me know i think it's pretty pretty cool. I had a look very, very quickly on Google and I couldn't really find one, anything like it. Well, certainly not as awesome as this. So there's that. Well, here's a pair of beautiful Zuni earrings. I'm assuming Zuni because of that inlay work. They are silver and they are signed TRW right there. I couldn't get any information, but I believe it is a Zuni artisan. And these are just beautiful. I love the movement here. Kind of have that that sort of thing. Pretty, right? Yeah, I love these earrings. Those are very, very cool. Okay, moving on. I know somebody who does cleanouts, and she did give me a preview of an estate sale because she had a lot of jewelry. Now, what's interesting is, unfortunately, she has a guy who buys all of the gold. She had him come in first and buy all the gold, and she told me that he just scraps it, which breaks my heart, but I also thought, like, part of me thinks, yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Maybe that's what they're telling you, but I'm not sure about that. But at this particular sale, I found some real gold, and I think that he probably knew this was real gold, but because he melted, he just left it there. But I could not believe. I see this box. First of all, I love the little old box with the pink. Oh, you know how much I love stick pins that are old. Yeah, this one's the best one. Look at this. How darling is that little dove? It says 14 carat right there. You see it? Or does that say 10? Hold on, let me look. Yeah, it's 10 carat. Okay. This is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful thing. That's likely a garnet. We can test it if you'd like. A couple of seed pearls. Isn't that beautiful? Now, this part is not 10 carat gold. This one is just gold filled, and it says it right there. I think this is original to it. CPG, hold on, there's a patent number. I love that. So we'll put this in our pile to test, all right? So this one from a distance didn't kind of look that real to me because it just looked sort of black and dark. But then when I got the loop, and you can see on the phone too, how beautiful is that enameling? That's a real little pearl. And this one says 14 karat. Hopefully you can see that. So he left this one, which I'm kind of surprised. This doesn't have like that small of a weight, but he left this for me. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't know me or anything, but I'm really, really happy that I got these stick pins. You know, I have a place to put these. I'm going to put them right in my pin, my pin cushion, girls. 
so beautiful. Gosh, I love that. Now this one does look gold to me, just this top part, maybe not this part right there where you can see some of it's uh, scraping away there. Now, I can't see any wear on this, so we're gonna test this one. Um, I do have a bunch of gold that we're gonna test, you know, from that haul that my mother got and everything else. I do have some stray pieces, and believe it or not, my mother gave me a couple more pieces. She's like, do you think these are real? I'm like, where are you getting these? Yes, they're real. So we're going to do another testing thing. I'll try to get to that within the next few days. But let's just check out this stone. This is likely uh, blue glass, I'm thinking, but we'll check. So three very, very beautiful stick pins. Now I can't remember what I paid, but as a general rule, uh, with things like that where the person calls me up, you know, and they're like, hey, come look at this stuff. I'll let you in to look at it. I don't like cheap out. I'm not going to be like, oh, would you take $10 for, you know, <laughs> that's why I'm getting this call. You see, whatever she tells me, I just say, sounds good. And I hand her the money. There's no negotiating. There's no trying to talk her down, you know, no way. So first of all, I love this old purple box. So there's that. Look at this very, very lovely old, I guess this is brass rosary. So nice. What does that say? GP? Huh. I wonder if that means, if that's the person's initial, if that is the name brand, or if it just means gold plated. It's possible. But I really love this. Now, this just looks like somebody just did this for years and years and years and years. It's all smoothed away. So I think a lot of prayers were said on this rosary, and I think it's just absolutely lovely. Yeah, this one definitely gives me the feels. Love it. That nice nice and old so I grabbed these because you know you see the box you open it up you see this and you go ah maybe those are gold they're not they're not I guess that's some sort of a marble or something or I don't know what sort of stone that is I'm sure somebody knows I don't anyway I guess this person had a cat there's a lot of fur on this so I got that and um, yeah not real but I just thought maybe maybe and then they also had this so Christian Dior can be good. I don't know how to prove if that's Christian Dior. There's no mark on it. I'll take a look at it, though, a little bit further. That's like a little tie tack. Cute. I love the pink. Probably this box alone I'd be able to get 6 or $7 for, I would guess. Then there were these earrings. These really look like Metropolitan Museum of Art, or MFA, which is the Museum of Fine Art in Boston. But they are not marked. It seems like they are, but they're not. When you look with a loop, there's like nothing in there that's that's readable. So just a very pretty pair of uh, 1980s, most likely, earrings that I love. I think these are really cool. Then in the same box, I got these weird earrings. Aren't these weird? Missing a stone, too, which I didn't realize. But I guess you just put these on your lobe, and then you squeeze so they stay on pull them apart to take them off. I thought that was kind of interesting. I've never seen anything quite like that before, so I thought that was kind of cool. I didn't know it was missing that stone or else I, I probably wouldn't have grabbed them, but let's see what else I got from her. Here's another great old box. Oh yeah, okay, there's some really good stuff in here. All right, wow, I forgot about this. This was super cool. First of all, how much do you love this Christmas tree? Come on, look at that. This part here, these little outer petals are just clear plastic. And then these beads right here, like the colored ones, I think are plastic too. But then they have all these prong set uh, rhinestones. I just love that. I really love this. I don't have anything like it in my Christmas pin collection. So I'm going to put that in there. No marks, right? Yeah, just costume jewelry. Almost everything was costume jewelry. But I believe there's some gold in here uh, that the, the guy didn't take. Oh, yeah. So look at this. Here's our more for old butterfly jewelry. I have never seen a panel bracelet with these pictures on it before. So is that totally blurring out? Let me see if I can get it better. Just pull it away a little bit. Yeah. See the wing in the background? That's reverse painted. And that is, who is that? Uh, I know who that is. Yeah, he's in Rio, right? I can't remember. How beautiful is this? Wow. Wow, wow, and wow. I don't think this is sterling. It, it may have some silver content, 
It doesn't look it though, does it? It doesn't. And this might not be the original spring ring. It doesn't seem like it is. It's awfully shiny. Anyway, this is a beautiful, beautiful bracelet. I love this bracelet. Look at this nice little pin. Isn't that pretty? Oh, she's so young. Looks like she might have jewelry on her neck, does she? Uh, maybe. It's hard to tell, huh? Oh, it's got some age wear on it. Well, she's sweet. This one is antique, and this thing snapped off in the back, unfortunately. But I'll put her in my antique jewelry collection. Uh, I hope you had a happy life. These are great. Look at these. These are very, very, very nicely done. Beautiful round drop earrings. Really high quality. I'm surprised these aren't signed. Wouldn't that be fun if these were real diamonds, huh? They're not, I don't think. It's just costume. Clip on. Sorry, I have like very clumsy fingers. Hopefully you can see how beautiful those are. These have a lot of sparkle. Is that somebody's hair? Okay, we're going to try not to get disgusted by it because I was just saying hair is not really disgusting. I mean, unless you find it in your food, then it is. Anyway, those are really cool swing and 60s earrings. Here's a beautiful pair of costume jewelry earrings. We'll take a look at the mark right here. This mark is for a company called Vargas. They started in 1945 and they were based in, where else? Providence, Rhode Island. This is very typical for them. They were known for their simulated opals with the prong set and the rhinestone look. I have a lot of pieces of Vargas jewelry. Quite lovely. Look at the sawtooth setting. Very pretty screw back earrings by Vargas. Look at this adorable Scotty dog pin. Isn't that cute? It's engraved Washington DC. This is probably from the forties. So Scotty dogs were a real craze in the forties and the thirties too. It kind of still continues. A lot of famous people own Scotty dogs, including Roosevelt, Bogart, Betty Davis, I think, and many, many others. It just sort of became a little bit of a craze. I remember in the early 2000s, Paris Hilton had a Chihuahua, and then uh, Chihuahuas really had a big craze, too, because, I don't know, people just want what celebrities have. But I think this is really cute, and it really looks like it's from the 40s, right? Not real, though, just costume. It looks real, that's for sure, but it's not. Look at this beautiful pin. This is great. And it, the thing that makes it, of course, is this sort of tassel -y thing right here. I mean, it isn't really because it's just a solid piece. It's not on a chain. And this is by Vandell. So this is gold filled, which is very typical for them. They also made a lot of sterling. You see right there, it says 1 20th 12 KTGF for gold filled. So Vandell, I think, began in the late 30s, and they were also based in Providence, Rhode Island. I have a lot of Vandell jewelry. I think it's just beautiful. I just love the whole sensibility of this part that, that goes around here and that sort of leaf and that purple stone and then this, so you have that movement when you walk. That's very unusual. I've never seen a Vandell like this. Really has that rose gold look too, right? Beautiful. See, I think these are gold. I think he didn't get these, uh, because, but I, I don't know if it's just because they were too small for him, but these are gold. So one indication can be when it has this groove, the groovy thing right here, the grooves on the, the stud part, but the back is clearly marked 14, I think. I'm sorry, geez, it, I re it was really on there. I think I, I put it all the way on there. Um, we can definitely test these to see if that's diamond. It doesn't look it, that's for sure, but the pearl is real, and these backs are marked 14, I think. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, I'm sorry. It does say 10 carat. It's on the bottom right there. It might be hard to see. So, of course, just because the backs are marked doesn't mean the earrings are real, but they these do look real. So, I'm not going to test gold today, but we will definitely check out that stone, which just, it would be very, it doesn't look like a diamond at all. But we're going to check this and then I'll put it in my red bag for my uh, gold testing show, which I will do if you want. We can do it together. Pretty nice either way, you know. At least the backs are real. The backs have value alone anyhow. And here's an adorable little heart. Look at this, a double heart. This might very well be real. Let me look at it with a loop. Hold on. 
I was going to say that this is probably nine carat, but I do see just a little bit of rubbing right on the tips of those hearts. Hard to see, but there is just a bit. So I suppose these are only gold plated. They're darling though. Nice and old. That's great. Great item. I got this. So this looks like a 1920s ring and it is our good friend Uncas. I keep finding them. I never used to. All of a sudden I see them all the time. And they were also Rhode Island based. There it is, a U with an arrow through it. Just beautiful. I just love this. It certainly feels like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, costume, I guess. <laughs> I guess this is some sort of a alloy. Really cute though. Wanna test that stone for fun? We know it's glass, but we can check this if you want. Beautiful antique ring, love that. Okay, let's put that in our pile of testing. Moving on, I think I got this one elsewhere, so I don't wanna go out of order, but I do think I got this one elsewhere. J. Crew. this is just a great mint green. The reason I bought this is because I think I have a whole stack of J. Crew um, bangles, so I'm gonna put them all together and sell them, so I picked that one up just to put with my lot. What's in here? Yeah, this came from the estate sale, okay. More crystals more crystals. So now I have like 5,001 <laughs> crystal necklaces instead of just 5,000. So this is very cute. Yeah, love it. Very nice AB coating on there. Pretty much intact. Lovely. I like the box too. And what is this one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This thing. Now, look at this. I was like, whoa. I think these are called potato pearls, right? These are fresh water, I think. But it's so beautiful. I couldn't believe it. And it's a Monet. Look at that. This is not just an ordinary Monet. This had to have been a really expensive one. I don't think it has a super a lot of age on it. But um, let's just see where the price is here. Yeah, it was 58 bucks in its day right? I mean, probably not old, like I said, but it's really nice, really nice. Yeah, it opens and closes like this. Just that sort of slide, slide finding. This is beautiful. I love this. I got to look up exactly what this is. This is a great bracelet, so I got that. I have to interrupt our regularly scheduled programming <laughs> to show you these two pieces. This was after my mother's gold haul. I was leaving her house. She goes, oh, how about these? So she found these too, like I guess a couple of months ago and she forgot to give them to me. So there's this. I was like, are you kidding me? That is real. This is a Habier cameo, of course, because she's wearing a necklace. That's got to be a real diamond. So let's test that. Now she has some weird ink on her. See the purple or blue? I'm not sure how I am going to get that off. I'm gonna Google search it and see if there's a safe way to do it. And the mark is there, 10K, upside down. Isn't that nice? So this was a yard sale find. So we can check that diamond if you want, at least. So we'll put this over here. And then this is the other thing she hands me. I was like, ugh. Boy, I would almost stake my life on it that that's gold. That's got to be gold. This is very heavy, too. Who knows what kind of stone that is? I don't. I guess it's some sort of agate, but I don't know. It sure is beautiful. It's really heavy, and I know it's heavy because of the stone, but even this part seems like it's solid. Um, is there a mark on there? Wait a second. I didn't see one, but maybe it is there. Let me look with my loop. Hold on. You know what? I think... Yeah, it looks like there was a mark there many, many years ago. So I don't know. Well, I'll put this in my gold testing pile and we will do this another day. I'll put it with the other stuff. Yeah, she just steps in you know what all the time. I don't know how she does it. I really don't. Maybe it's because she's, you know, 80 something. And I, I don't know, maybe people, I mean, they, they can't just sell this stuff if they know it's real gold. I mean, no matter how old somebody is, I don't know. Anyway, I got this adorable set. This probably isn't worth much. Uh, I don't know if it's sterling or not. We'll take a look. How adorable is this little thing? So it's marked EPNS, made in England. EPNS stands for Electroplated Nickel Silver 
Of course, uh, nickel silver doesn't contain any silver, but this is electroplated with a little bit of silver. So it does have silver, just a very, very thin layer. But I thought that was kind of adorable just because it was a poodle. And this poodle is feeling pretty good about itself. It's like a snooty, a snooty poodle. And then this napkin ring, I guess that's a napkin ring. Isn't that cute? In the original box, I don't know. I thought it was fun. I thought maybe it would be worth something. I'll have to look it up, not sure. Cute though, right? So I got this bunch of jewelry from a woman who I bought a lot of gold from in the past. She was a nurse's aide and she worked for a very old woman and this old woman passed away and didn't have any heirs. So she had gotten all of her stuff and I met her at a yard sale. Anyway, I did buy a lot of gold off of her in the past and a lot of great old costume jewelry as well. I did give her a fair price for it and she also knew what she had because she had gone to a pawn store. So anyhow, she had a little bit more jewelry for me and she, uh, first of all, this cat's amazing. Look at that thing. <laughs> what a great pink enamel cat. But anyway, uh, she brought out her jewelry box for me and just from an ethical standpoint, I... Um, you know, made sure that I pointed out to her that this thing right here is gold. So that's a little bit different. Like if I see somebody at a yard sale and they have a bunch of stuff out and everything's a dollar, you know, that's on them to know what they have. And uh, I'm certainly not going to tap somebody on the shoulder to tell them that their Ralph Lauren sheets that they're asking $10 for sell in Bed Bath & Beyond for, uh, you know, $280. That's not up to me to keep tapping them on the shoulder to tell them how much everything is worth that they are selling. I'm sure they know that their Pottery Barn lamps cost a bundle. Uh, this does say 14 karat gold. But anyway, the reason that I bring this up is because this woman let me into her home and showed me her personal jewelry box. So that's different. You know, when I'm the expert and she isn't then I make sure that I point out to her, that's gold, this is silver, and I gave her a very, very fair price, and she was very happy. She told me she square danced with her husband, so this pin is completely awesome. <laughs> anyway, I know there's a lot of people who would have tried to get stuff, you know, really on the cheap and told her it, it was junk or whatever, but uh, yeah, I don't play it like that. You know, that cutthroat dealer thing and all of that, I don't do it like that. I like to be able to get up in the morning and look in the mirror and feel really good about who's looking back. That's just how I do it. I don't judge anybody. I know everybody's different, but yeah, I don't really do that sort of crazy cutthroat thing. So I gave her a fair price. Uh, this looks like it needs to be clean. That is sterling. What a nice chain this is. She also sold me a coin collection that I don't know much about. I don't want to show this charm bracelet because there's some personal items on here. And I don't know, I just feel like I want to protect your privacy a little bit. But there is another charm bracelet in here we'll take a look at. How much do you love this seahorse? That's pretty awesome. Bo Sterling. I saw it somewhere. Where are you? Let me take a look. Hold on. Anyway, yeah, I'm not trying to be a Pollyanna or anything, but I try to do the right thing. You know what I mean? I get enough stuff that's really, really great stuff. I don't need to do the wrong thing by an old lady who's been very, very good to me. There it is, Bo Sterling. Uh, that's fantastic. I love this. I'm going to keep this, I think. I just love this seahorse. And, okay, here is a less personal charm bracelet. So let's take a look at what she's done in her world. Uh, that's the best. How much do you love this? I love that Christmas charm. I think it's adorable. Who is it signed? I have no idea who that is. S-T-G-J-M-F? Is that what it says? S-T-G-J-M-F? Don't know. I don't know. What does this say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> World's greatest wife. I have to talk to my husband about that. I think I should have that same charm. What is this? Maine. Oh, that's cute. And, oh, whoa. That's a very, very nice sewing machine, isn't it? I don't know if that one's sterling. I'll have to take a quick, uh, closer look at that. Aw, uh, look at that dog. What is that, a schnauzer? Cute, cute blue eyes, a thimble. So she sewed. This is probably from Maine, I would guess. Little articulated claws. Adorable. And she liked to roller skate, too. Well, that's a great, great charm bracelet. Let me see if the bracelet itself is also 
Sterling. It is JB. Don't know who that is. I'm thinking this is Sterling. I'm not exactly sure. I think so. Hmm. Let me check with the magnet here. Just see if it if it picks up. It really should be marked if it is. Huh. That doesn't count because that's just the finding there that's picking up. Hmm. We'll test this. I'll put this in my red bag. We are going to do a testing video pretty soon. Here's a cute charm. Golf clubs. I wonder if this one's sterling. Hmm. Might not be. I don't see it. And, oh, look, she had this. This is at least, at least the third one of these I have. I may have uh, four at this point, Jerry's, yeah. <laughs> Very cute. Oh, look at his collar. And then this I actually did not get from her. I got this one at a yard sale, a different one. Here's a very, very beautiful Jane Seymour heart and key. It's like a double heart and key pendant. I actually have the whole necklace here. It says 925 sterling silver. It's on a sterling silver chain. So uh, we can test this one for diamonds. Okay, let's move on. I got this necklace at a yard sale. This is sterling, as you can see right there. This is beautiful, beautiful liquid silver. I love this. This has a great feel to it. It does feel liquidy, if you know what I mean. Very smooth. This is nice and long, too. Love, love, love that. Very unusual. I've never seen one like this before. Never. That's a great one. This very well uh, might be gold. It certainly looks like it's gold. One way we might be able to tell is we'll just check those diamonds out. Maybe those are real diamonds. I don't know. Very pretty opal though, right? Anyway, we'll just see if those are diamonds and then we'll check the gold when I do my gold testing show. So I got this at a yard sale. I thought this was so weird. Secure ring. Protect your ring from unsightly rotation. It's like glue that you put on your finger that holds your ring. It's sort of weird. I don't really get it, but I bought it because um, I do have rings <laughs> that keep rotating. So I thought maybe that would be okay. I don't know. If it's like glued to your finger, it might be irritating. Not sure, but I'm going to try it out. And they had a very fancy, fancy house. So I got these two fossil watches from them too. Uh, this one's really nice, I think, as is this one. They're in very, very nice condition. I've sold fossil watches before, so I'm hoping these might have some value to them. I have to change the batteries, which is going to be a little bit more challenging because the stuff has to all be taken apart. But I know how to do that because I have the whole watch battery changing kit. So I think I just have this one last batch right here. So I stopped at this little, it said yard sale, but it was sort of in a warehouse, you know, and this guy like had this whole box full of things like this, Harley Davidson pin. And he said he looked everything up on eBay. He put the prices that they sell on eBay. And then he said, if you're interested, just take all of them for 30. And so I love selling these little things. I actually have a lot of fun with them and I have so, so many. So if something doesn't sell, wait a second. Huh, Fairfield, Connecticut. Un Unqua School? Unquoa School? Sterling, $45. Hmm, really well. We shall see about that. Pendant, $10. What is that? Is that St. Patrick's Cathedral? That's what it looks like. Yeah, I really like selling these things. I think it's fun. Some sort of a military thing. Yellowstone. Oh, Wyoming. Okay. Huh. I don't know. I know that I have so many of these. I can put these with other ones. Alaska pins. There's a lot in here. Whoa. And then this one. Yeah, this was weird. This one isn't in a bag. But I've never seen an Italian horn in a um, in copper before. Well, copper plated, I guess. I'll try to clean that up. But I think that's just plated. Anyway, I just thought that was kind of interesting. And let's see. There's just some sort of random Utah. But there's a really fun one here I want you to see. Key to Happiness, $35, Battle Monument of Bennington, Vermont. Huh, that's interesting. 1940, huh? Is that what it says? Yeah. Look at that. What is this? You just wear it as a pendant, I guess? Huh, 
I like that. Oh, look at this. See, this is the kind of stuff I love. And this is how people don't know how to look things up on eBay. Look, a guitar pin. That's not a guitar. Get out of here. That's a violin. That's a mother of pearl violin. So he looked up guitar pin. So maybe this is, well, it's probably not even worth 10 actually. But you know what I'm saying? Sometimes these people say they look stuff up and they don't know what they're doing. Knights of Pythias. Yeah, I've sold Knights of Pythias many, many times before. Oh, is that a skull and crossbones? Ah, cool. That's cool. And Arizona. Hold on. There's like one thing here. Is it not in here? Ooh, this looks old. Police Association, Suffolk County Medallion. See? <laughs> Digest and Clust or Cust. That's the thing I was just looking at last week. And I'm like, hey, I just saw that for the first time in my life. Oh, it is Clust. Oh, hmm. I think I misspoke on that other that other video. Anyway. Oh, the thing isn't here. I wanted to show you. All right. Let me just see if I can find it. Hold on. Well, I can't find it now, but there was this awesome pin back and it said um, Billy Jack for president. I don't know if you remember those movies, but they are great movies from the 70s, I guess. So that's all I got. I got a lot, right? These past couple of weeks. So excited that you joined me. Stick around if you want to see me test some gems. If not, we'll catch you soon. But anybody who wants to geek out a little bit and check out these gems, stick with me here. All right. So give me a minute. I will uh, put all these things away and we're, we'll test our, our stuff right here with our gem tester and we'll see what we have. So hold on one second. Okay, so here's my gem tester. It, uh, let's see if it's working for us today. <laughs> you never can tell. I mean, I sure hope it is. But it gets a little bit on the blink. You know what I mean? So let's check this out. This is real gold. We'll check out our little necklace here. Sure looks like a diamond to me, but what do I know? Okay. I don't know why the needle just went that fast. That's a little bit odd. <laughs> All right, let's check our uh, earrings, which I'm thinking might be gold. And these are pearls. I don't know. That looks like glass to me. That's not even moving at all. I think that should be moving a little bit. Well, it's not a diamond, that's for sure. Here's the opal ring I got at the yard sale. I'm thinking those are diamonds. I'm thinking this is real gold, even though it's not marked. Let's see. I don't know why it's doing that. I hope this thing isn't on the blank, but I do think those are diamonds though. That's great. Those are little diamond chips. Love it. Let's take a look at my Victorian bird stick pin. I'm thinking this is probably a garnet or a ruby. It might just be glass. Hmm, not moving. I feel like that should at least be saying glass, right? Let me just do something. Let me just, there's a calibration thing here. Let's just see what happens. It should go up into the red. Yeah, it's going too far. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, this is freaking out a little bit. Oh, what should I do? Should I buy another one now? Well, I guess we're not even gonna be bothering checking these because this thing is on the blank. I don't know what to say anymore. I keep buying you and you keep not working anyway. All right. Well, at least we're thinking this is diamond and we're thinking this is diamond. So that's good. These other things, who the heck knows? I don't know. Ugh. Anyway, thank you as always for joining me today. I really appreciate you coming to hang out with me to go through some really pretty things I think I just got recently. I really truly hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to share the video. Give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. I'd love to know what you really thought was very, very pretty. And I hope to see you soon. All right. Cheers, everybody.